this discussion about copyrights. Uh, I think from, from the book business, from the book perspective, piracy is something that should be stimulated. Every writer should say, I'm a pirate myself. Because somehow people download books and they cannot read online. So they go and buy a book, which I decided, that's why I decided to put in my site a thing called Pirate Coelho. So if any one of you want, want to pirate any of my books, you are welcome to do that. Uh, I only have the rights for the Brazilian uh, well, version because I write in Portuguese and I don't have the rights for French or American or Croatian or Japanese. So what I do is to collect the links from my readers. Sometimes they scan, sometimes they type, sometimes they even translate books that are not yet translated. And then I put the links here, and then the publishing house comes to me and say, Oh, this is not legal. <laughs> we have the rights. But I said, Well, it's not my fault. I'm just putting a link. It's not me who parted. And so I managed to, to somehow to go beyond the limits of legality. But for book, this is very important. Uh, I based that on an experience in Russia in 1999. I had sold, let's say, less than 10,000 copies in Russia. And I found the pilot copy of the Alchemist in the in internet. I said, I have nothing to lose, let's put this pilot edition People can download for free. The translation is not that good. And so the next year, I had uh, moved over 100,000 copies sold in Russia. And two years after, I was over 1 million copies. So I realized that piracy was helping me, was not hurting the sales of my books. So I decided to elaborate more and more, and today when I look back, or when I look to the present moment, what I do see is that uh, I'm selling more books than ever, because this idea of being greedy, of trying to stop the share of information, does not help books. You have to share in order to, to somehow to get some revenue. So how do you publishers feel about this? Well, the first reaction, uh, they said it is not good, it's going to stop the sales of, of your books. So I got a phone call from my American publisher because it became news. I, I spoke in DLT, the, the, the event in Germany, and I spoke out of the blue and People are very interested in, the, in this idea, so they were amused. And I got a phone call from the CEO of HarperCollins then. Her name is Jane Friedman. And when Jane Friedman calls you, you are paralyzed by fear. It's not easy, you know? <laughs> She's a good friend of mine. But still, I, I, I'm totally intimidated by her. And Jane said, Paulo, we have a problem. Like Houston, we have a problem. And I said, I know what you're talking about, uh, Jane. Yes, you know, people are calling us, blah, blah, blah. And, but I said, well, I cannot take it back. I said that in front of everybody. And by the way, these links were there for two years. So, uh, she said, let's create something different. And then HarperCollins developed a software that you can read the book online, but you cannot download the book online. So we managed. 
and the other publishers, they, they, they did not say anything. But let me give you a very good example. Three months ago, I decided to write books or to use some texts that uh, I had, and I made three books, one of them in five languages, and the other two in two languages, or three languages. And I put it there for free download. Books only for internet. And I had, up to this day, over one million downloads on these books. How many comments did I get out of this three books, three, three titles? Zero. Meaning, people download, they read, and they think, oh, I'm going to buy the hard copy uh, when it is available. So, what does it mean? It means that the fact that you have the book here for free, it does not hurt your sales. And I get many, many messages. When this book, it's called The Way of the Bull, because I normally do archery. This is my, my favorite sport. And uh, so I wrote a book on archery, but not about archery techniques, but about about uh, the metaphor of being an archer. Uh, and then uh, I put the book there, and so far I did not get a single, single comment. Because people don't have the hard copy. Meanwhile, I get over 400 emails a day commenting my books that we have a hard copy. So how do you deal with that? Can you tell the story while well, uh, Kathy still recovers with can you tell the story, Paolo, on how you invited your readers for uh, a dinner in your house, right? You told that story. This is so amazing because Paolo blogs, and if you've not checked Paolo's blog, you should. And you publish videos, you, you do like a tweet as well. You, you're on different social software, but one day you decided to invite everybody home, right? For a party. Not everybody, not everybody, come on. <laughs> By the way, Twitter, I had to film it because people, it's not all really tweeting here. So, uh, well, I went and I filmed, I'm tweeting, you see me tweeting, and then I, 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 I uploaded YouTube, now people believe that I tweet, because otherwise they think that I'm very busy. I'm not very busy, nobody's very busy to have fun, because I think that at the end of the day, back to privacy, I'm going to answer your question. Take your time. The goal of any artist is to share his work. So, as a writer, I start writing not to earn money. I start writing because I want people to read my books. And I think that every single writer does this because he or she wants to be read. Every single musician, every single painter wants to have his work or her work uh, somehow commented or seen by other people. So this is the basic idea of contents. Contents we provide because we want to share. So when you're talking here about business model, this is a different conversation. We should have it too. Yeah. After that. But I love your yeah. thoughts on the current times and how you know it yeah. evolves. But then, yeah, then then back to the party. Every 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 year I, I give one party to my friends. And by the way, let me go a fast forward, a rewind a little bit the tape. The idea of the blog was the same idea as the party. I took the Trans-Siberian train to go from Moscow to Vladivostok because it was something that I had a dream about going from Moscow to Vladivostok. And I thought, but to make this travel alone, this is nonsense. Why not create a blog? Because then uh, people can travel with me, I can share my impressions, etc. Which I did. And then I got caught in this blogger's world. And, oh, yeah, because the other people got here as well. <laughs> and then I started with, well, 
500 visitors and 100 and blah, blah, blah. And when, when you go, I had this idea, well, every year I give one party to my friends. And at the end of the day, my readers are my friends. Who are your friends, Paul? My friends are people like you, for example. Like, okay. <laughs> well, that's a lot of fun. And you can't just have your friend. But like but, readers, if your readers are my friends, you have many friends. I think you yeah, have a of Facebook limit here of 5,000 friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of you course, are, of course. But I'm talking to this friend that you go and have dinner and stay in a bar for 10 hours doing nothing and drinking and smoking. Smoking you cannot anymore, but at least drinking and yeah, going outside and smoking a cigarette and going inside and, and, and then drinking again. So, uh, I thought to myself, why not invite the 10 first readers that write to this address to come to my party? They are going to represent, I think we are, we are, we are now over 130 million books sold, which makes close to 500 million readers, considering the ratio three readers per per book. So I said the first 10 people who write to this address, they're my guests. And I I got immediately 10 10 10 10 10 10 emails. And one from Japan, one from Venezuela, two from Spain, one from England. And I said, they, they got me wrong. They think that they, I'm paying their bill, the tickets, and everything. Because I said, Japan, you know, Qatar, there was some conference that was in the army, in the US Army. Huh? And I said, let me send an explanation to these people and say, I'm not paying your ticket. I'm just inviting you to my party. And they said, no, we understood. And I said, the party lasted two hours, three hours maximum, no more than that. No, we understand that. So I got to these readers. At that moment, it was only my blog. And then this year, I had another party, this annual party that I gave. Uh, and then I went up to 40 readers, 10 from MySpace, 10 from Facebook, 10 from my blog, and and, and, and then, uh, if I, I don't remember, and, and then I think this personal connection is very important because people used to say, at least there is something that I don't understand about writers, they, they have this tendency to detach themselves from this contact with readers, although you need this contact. Well, you can tell the room is empty, right? Yeah. <laughs> No, you, need, you need this contact, <laughs> you need this contact because at the end of the day every, everybody has something interesting to say and, uh, and this is what we did. For me a book is a very intimate thing, it's a kind of personal relationship with myself. I write books to understand better myself. So for this of course I meet people etc. But but I cannot go that far. Having said that, the idea of copyright is started together with the printing process, the movable type printing process by Gutenberg. So when we start having the first mass production of an artist object, called book that at the end of the day was responsible for Renaissance. It was thanks to the possibility of an idea traveling from A to B under the form of a book that uh, we had changed the whole world, influenced arts, etc. like the movement we see and we call today as Renaissance. That said, uh, what we see now is the opposite. People don't understand, so just to finish the copyright thing, when books start being profitable, 
They said, we have to protect our rights. And then they decided that you have copyright. They did not have copyright before. What we see now, at least as for books, I don't want to elaborate on movies, I don't want to elaborate on music. Huh? I saw that in the movie business, they had a window to understand what was going on and to cut a good deal. But instead of sending negotiators, they sent lawyers and just destroyed the whole business. Because at the end of the day, who is going to win? The pirates. They always won. But they still exist. They are in Somalia now. And some of them, if you go back to the 16th century, they became knights, they became sirs, they became lords, you know, because they conquered the seas. Yeah. But Paolo, you, like, you, you're, you're immensely popular, and so it's great that the sales are going on so well. But if you have a, a, a writer or in the music industry, you, you, you have a physical form of a CD or for a movie completely disappear, right? Imagine, and it were, I think it we're at this point now, that your book, I can download it, and I can print it to a quality that gets me exactly the same as I buy from the writer. You can do that already. Yes, exactly. So then, if, if, I, if a writer doesn't have you know, set that much, you know, of course, um, huge demand as you have, how do they make money? How does one, you know, for, for, for the music industry, Let's go back to the very reason why people write. They write to be read. They don't write to make money. Right. If they want to make money, they, they, they're going to be an investment banker. Not today, but probably two years ago. Huh? So you write because you want to share something. And, and then when I start writing, I could never dream that I would make money. I write, I wrote because I want to write. I want to be read. So you're telling all the artists to just share everything? I'm telling all the artists that there is no harm if you share it. Okay. Probably for the movies, it's much more complicated. Uh, because it takes a lot of money to invest, and then, and then, uh, then you download, you see, and you yeah. don't pay the rent. And you don't need a box, right? So. Yeah, yeah. So movies, I think, uh, uh, are quite complicated, and I don't see any foreseeable solution in the, in, the, in, the, in the end. But don't forget, don't trick yourself by the arguments of some industries, mostly the book industry, that they are defending the money of the author. This is simply not true. This is not true. Because as a writer, I want to be read. And I'm sure that if I share, people are going to understand. They're going to buy the book. It's easy to buy the book. But so you heard there is a, but we take this question, but there's a law in France being prepared to punish uh, everybody downloading anything and also we'll have the yellow bar of orange, you know, coming just after you, but like a little later. But they're trying to even catch the internet service provider saying, you know, look, if there is a Paolo Coelho book here, we'll tax you. So you, you don't think they should do that? Well, I'm not French, so I cannot talk about this law. What I can talk about is about the system, yeah. not the system the socio-political system, but this peer-to-peer -peer system, they will find a way. You know better than anybody else. They close here, they open here. Okay, so they close like, let it go, right? And at the end of the day, if they track down who inspired my books, they're going to find my IP. I am seeding my books. <laughs> Please. Don't be paralyzed by your fears. I was 38. Huh? People say, oh my God, it's too late to change your life. But no, it's not too late to change your life. You can change your life anytime you want to change your life. 
But for this, you have to take your first step with fear, uh, thinking that nobody's going to understand you, etc. But this is what makes life fun. You are doing your work here, blogging, for example. What's the business model for blogging? As far as I know, it's non-existent. Huh? But you still do it. You do it because you like it. And this is, well, you should do something that justifies your life, is to have fun, is to, to, do, to do something that uh, you, you have fun. So don't think too much. Well, how about the question? And we'll take one question uh, here and uh, manifest yourself if you want as well later. But Paolo, we're like, you know, like if you read too much the media these days and TV and then, you know, listen to the markets, you're, you're, you get negative, right? I don't get negative, no. I get positive on a business level because the best gift is a book. It's not expensive, so book sales are going up. So recession is good. So at least for, for the book sellers, it's the perfect uh, no, momentum, probably not for... So, I, well, look, I don't know, you, you are there and you see the, the book sales going up. If you are creating your startup, Pardon? if you are creating your startup, you have a... Trip. That would be difficult, that would be difficult. What, what, what would you do? Well, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not creating a startup. Okay, <laughs> we'll take one question here. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, hello, my name is uh, Gabriel McIntyre, Gabe Mac. My question is going a little bit past the business models and so forth. What I'm seeing on the internet is an exchange and flow of ideas, an exchange and flow of cultures, an exchange and flow of identities, of consciousness. It's a soul that's starting to happen. The tools have now come out with Twitter, with Seismic, with all these different tools. However, understanding how this technology can be used seems to be like the next step and how do we use this in our global consciousness and I see that artists like yourselves are the ones to take the first steps but shouldn't the artists be as important and stimulated as much as the startups themselves to try and figure out what this means for all of us in which sense should we do that in expanding, you know, instead of just using, for instance, a Twitter just to say, you know, I'm going to have a cup of coffee, to try and do something different with it, to try and, you know, make an art piece out of it, or whatever. It has no monetary value whatsoever, but just to try and understand how we communicate more by giving the tools to the artist that normally would not have even thought of playing with. I totally agree with you. But it's going to take time. It's going to take time for society to understand the importance of what we are doing, you and some artists. I give you a concrete example. If you want to see a very concrete example, I want to see a movie that won the Cannes Film Festival in 1986. It was called The Heads by Alain Cavalier. So I tried to buy, impossible. I tried to rent. I found a, a place in Switzerland. So I put my credit card, blah, blah, blah. And now we have to live in Switzerland to rent this movie. I tried everywhere. The only place that I found it, it was in Demonoid. So, Somehow, this peer-to-peer -peer science are becoming the real storage of things that the, well, the cultural producers don't want to sell anymore. So what I would suggest is to wait. I know that the internet time uh, is not the real time, but there is no way to convince the society that what you are doing is for good, unless they realize. And for this, they need to take time back to the crisis. This is going to help a lot. Probably not startups now, but people are going to start understanding that they have this gigantic web of information, 
they can share for free. Enough of this, starting with the free platform, making money. But this is going to take a while. We need this collapse that's happening now. When I see the Dow Jones going up, I said, no, 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 go down, 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 because you have to realize that this is a failed model. So until it goes to 5,000, people are not going to realize. But when it goes to 5,000 Dow Jones, then people is going to start thinking, oh, there are some free things, and free will become profitable. So we're, uh, we're, we're very lucky to have you here, Paolo. Will you come back next year? If you invite me, we'll oh, come on. Yeah, of course. So in between, we'll, uh, we can throw a party for you. You, you, look, you know, like we can invite 10 friends so you can see me. You know, but we'd love to have more friends for you. <laughs> okay, I'd like to really to stress the importance of having the web here in France. I just arrived for the web. Thank you. And, and uh, having all these people uh, here. This kind of event is as important as for a writer to meet a reader in the street and, and say, I'm not alone. I think that overall the whole message of the web to 2008 is, I'm not alone. You're not alone. You're discussing, you're realizing that you have the same problems and you're going to find creative solutions for that. Thank you very much for your, your attention. Your